Hi everybody, this is Mark Weitzman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Theoretical Physics with Mark Weitzman. Today I want to continue with the uh, group theory in uh, physics course. And um, I have one video left for the uh, short course by Irene um, Shinestead. And um, that's on applications to quantum mechanics. And I'll do a live stream on that early next week. Today's date is March 20th, 2024. And then, um, then I'll like to continue with um, part two. And this will be the first video of part two. So today, we're going to begin with um, Shinested. Part two. This is the long course. Chapter 1, the Frobenius Algebra, I can't spell, I'm getting more and more dyslexic as I get older, sorry about that. This is the first video, and it's on a preliminary preliminary discussion. So, um, part two of um, Shinestad is um, much more detailed and theoretical, and um, there are also a lot more applications. Um, including it to um, continuous groups and Lie algebra and elementary particle physics. Um, there's a lot of uh, new notation and it's just unavoidable. It's just the why group theory in physics is a little bit um, difficult because you have to learn a ton of new notation and definitions. And um, but especially chapter one, It's going to be used over and over again in the rest of the book. In the rest of the book. And it's going to apply to the uh, symmetric groups. Young diagrams, we'll study that in... Um, Chapter 3, uh, we're going to have things like characters of the symmetric groups and reducing tensor spaces. So, um, Chinesse that gives the advice to... Um, you know, read slowly and carefully. Chapter 1 is like the core of the book. So we start by defining an algebra. When you have an algebra, what mathematicians mean is a uh, linear some kind of linear space with some law of multiplication. And um, Define the uh, Frobenius algebra, or we'll call it now. One I'll refer to it as the group algebra, and we denote it by a a of g. 
A for algebra and G for the group. So this is some kind of um, abstract n-dimensional because we're still dealing with finite groups g. g is order of g equal n n-dimensional linear space spanned by by the n group elements let's call them a1 a2 a3 an these are these and then these are regarded as the uh, basis elements of the group. Basis elements or uh, vectors. So basically if we have an element of the groove algebra, small a, then this is uh, this implies that a can be written as a1 times a1 plus a2 times a2 plus dot 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 a n times a n where each uh, each AI is uh, an element of the field that we're using. We're always going to use complex numbers in physics, so we're just going to be just going to say that there. Um, each AI is an element of C, complex numbers. Now, the sum, the plus in this case, this is just the formal sum. We haven't really defined it yet. And you could think of it as just an abstract addition process. And um, it obeys the usual laws of um, addition. It's uh, commutative, distributive, etc. It's just the usual addition. Now, if the group elements AI, let's say, are linear operators, so we have like a space of functions which they operate on, and we're dealing with linear operators that each one form a group, then we can give a... Um, we can give a, a definition to the sum, you know, A is equal to the sum over I of AI, AI, and let's say B is equal to the sum over I, BI, AI, then A plus B is equal to the sum over I, AI plus BI, AI. So it's just the way we always add operators. And AB we can also define as well. This is equal to the sum over I and K of AI, BK, AI, BK. Oh. I'm sorry. AI. A I A K. Now this works because um, let me just correct my notes here.
This works because a i a k is equal to some element of the group by the group multiplication law. So let's call this a l. We don't know which one it is, but and we sometimes use the notation i comma k goes to l. That's exactly what this uh, means. And then so this is just a regular group algebra element. It's, it's not like we're going outside of it. Um, and um, multiplication will also be um, will also be uh, associative and distributive. But uh, it won't be not commutative unless the group G is a commutative or abelian group. Now I want to do a lot of definitions. So you'll just have to bear with me, but you have to become like um, familiar with the language in this book. So let's start with a null element. We denote it by phi, sort of like a, or a zero with a line through it. Um, so this is the element whose um, complex components are all zero. So this is just, just exactly what we expect here. Now the next thing I want to define is um, subalgebra. So if um, B is a subset of A of G, and I, I'm not distinguishing here between proper subset or improper subset, and, uh, and is closed with respect to uh, multiplication, And this is the same multiplication as for A of G. This looks like a C a lot. Now there's no confusion. Um, then B is a subalgebra. Now, it's important to distinguish. Sorry about that. It's important to distinguish that this means like if B1 and B2 is in B, then this implies that B1, B2 is in B. It does not imply if A is in A, not a is an A, then, then A, B, say A, B, 1 is in B. It's only closed with respect to the elements in the group. Now, let's do the next one, left ideal. So this is the language, you know, of... Um, rings and all that stuff if you've taken an algebra course and ideals and everything so some of you may be familiar with all of this but in, assuming you're a physics student you very well may not be so if l is a subalgebra
of the group algebra. Then for all L in L and A in the group algebra, this implies that A L, notice A is on the left, A L is in the uh, left ideal. So this is what a left ideal is. And a right ideal is the same except now it's going to be LA is an element of L or let's call it usually we denote uh, right ideals by R So uh, that's that distinguished. And then we have what we call invariant or two-sided ideals. So this just means um, that it's simultaneously a left and right ideal and if that's the case usually we'll use the symbol like V okay so for the rest of this thing I'm always gonna focus on left ideals but the same definitions and everything else can be done would apply to um, right ideals so um, let's talk about independence So L1, L2, LH, this is the same linear algebra definition, standard, if, you know, L1 plus L2 plus LH is equal to the null element, implies for all I, LI equal null element. So here this is uh, for all li, li is in script li, li is in, in the ideal. Okay and now we have completeness and we say that l1, l2, lh is complete if it's independent and for all A in AG we can write A as being equal to A1 plus A2 plus dot 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 ah. I'm going to box this equation because I need it later and I'm going to denote it by star star star. This is h not n. Where ai is an element of the left ideal li. And it's easy to show because of independence that this expansion is unique. Okay. And uh, that I'll define the uh, component. When we write A uh, like that, by the way, symbolically, we write K of G is equal to L1 plus L2, 
capital H. Um, and physicists, physicists call call this. I think mathematicians do as well. The direct sum, and we write it as a g equal to l one plus l two plus dot 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 l h. So Shenenstead in her notation, the book very rarely puts the circles around the plus, pluses or the times. So physicists do though. Um, so AI in this expansion, AI is the vector component of A in L. In Li, actually. Okay, so now we can do a little bit of math. Um, so let's apply this uh, decomposition to um, the identity the identity element E of the uh, group G. So multiplying this equation over here, multiplying that equation by uh, E, we would get, applying it to E, setting A equal to E, we would get E equals E1 plus E2 plus E H where E I is an L I. I'll box this equation as well. And um, so this defines the uh, vector. the component of the identity E to be is equal to EI. Now multiply the equation star by by EI EI on the left we'll get another equation star star EI E by the group property of the identity this is just EI and this is now equal to EI E1 plus EI E2 EI EH. Now, since LJ is, is a left sided ideal now I have to say sided is a left ideal e i e j is in l j now let's just like do a quick example to, sh to see what this implies let's say we Let's focus on a particular EI, let's say E2. E2 is equal to E2, E1, plus E2, E2, 
plus e2, e3, e2, eh. Now, so we know that we know that e2, e1, this is an l1. This is an L2. E2, of course, is an L2. This is an L3. And this is an LH. Now remember, the ideals are independent. So the only way this can be, and we could subtract this over here and set it equal to the null and then make the argument, but consistency independence of ideals li requires that uh, that e2 ei is equal to the null element for i unequal to 2 and e2 e2 is equal to e2 so that's the the example here in general ei ej is equal to ej ei is equal to the null element for i unequal to j and ei squared equal to ei put a box around that okay so now let's do some more definitions item potent Remember, in this, this is like confused me all uh, over and over again, but E, small e, is not the uh, identity element of the group. Which uh, we denote by capital E. So an item potent satisfies E equal to EE, e, which we also write as E squared. That's the definition of an item potent. And then we have uh, a nulls. Actually, it's two L's, I believe. A, I think it's one N and two L's. Hold on a second. Sure, I think it's one L here. I want to see how she, I'm going to look at Shinesta's book and pardon me for a second, but. annulling she uses two L's okay um, by the way this is my old uh, actual copy of the book okay um, so a and L's B if a B equals the null element and then there's mutually annulling If uh, A, 
B equals B A equals null elements. Okay. So this uh, boxed equation above in words. Shinestad's words is the vector components of the identity in a complete set of independent left ideals are a set of mutually annulling item potents. Okay. I'll box this also. Okay. So now multiply star by A. Remember star is a uh, all the way all the way up that decomposition of E and we get A is equal to AE1 plus AE2 plus AEH and again this is in L1 this is in L2 this is an LH, and if we compare with the first uh, that equation a long time ago, star, 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 we get AI is equal to AEI. So the vector component of the element A is just in the left ideal, LI is just AEI. So this in words is again, is that EI projects out of A, an element of A of G, the part that is in Li, or um, symbolically Li is equal to a of G, the group algebra, times E I. So we, we say that uh, E I uh, EI generates the left ideal LI. Okay. Now we define reducible. A reducible uh, item potent. So E item potent is reducible if it can be written as as a sum of two mutually 
annulling. Non null item potent. So in equations we have E equal to I wish I could erase the whole thing. E equal to E one plus E two E one squared equal E one. E2 squared equal to E2. E1 is not null. E2 is not null. And E1, E2 equal E2, E1 equal null. Okay. So uh, that leads to a primitive. or irreducible item potent um, it's just uh, the same it's it's uh, the item potent is not reducible And now we have a reducible so L L is a reducible that implies that L is equal to L1 plus L2 and uh, they're not null Um, okay, so th so this implies that um, every element L in the uh, reducible ideal L, that implies that L is equal to L1 plus L2, L1 is an element of L1, L2 is an element of L2. Now, we can show that uh, an ideal which is generated by a reducible item potent E is a uh, reducible and if E is irreducible then uh, L is irreducible. I didn't define what an ideal is. An ideal is irreducible if it's not reducible. Okay. Um, so I shall just say that L is irreducible if not reducible. And you should um, prove these statements. These are exercises in the book. As as an exercise. Okay. So um, next week, next video, we'll apply all these ideas and and uh, definitions to the. Um, the regular representation. Which is very important for showing general results. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I know it's a lot of 
definitions and everything. And um, but hopefully, um, you know, like I said, next week we'll start with more um, more results and math and everything. But we have to get the uh, the language set. So I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.